supposed to be with us, and uh, we hope perhaps he is on the way that uh, we can acknowledge uh, him. Uh, Honorable Ababu Namwamba, the Chief uh, Administration Secretary from our ministry. Uh, Madam Milka Muwe, who is representing uh, the, uh, uh, the Postmaster General, uh, Poster Kenya. Uh, Professor PLO Lumumba in uh, a forum like this, not once, but a number of times. Uh, uh, chairman of the churches and magistrates uh, vetting uh, board, uh, and also is here in other capacities. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, representatives from different organizations uh, that I don't have a lot of time to make function, to welcome all of you, to welcome all of us to this uh, function this morning. But first things first, and I have three of them. One is uh, that uh, this day, this celebration, is organized jointly by a number of organizations. One, of course, is uh, the Indian High Commission here in Nairobi and uh, the leadership of the High Commissioner. And uh, we have POSTA Kenya. Uh, uh, we, oh, you remember that for the last uh, four years, the celebrations of the international nonviolence in Gigi, a much larger audience uh, to attend an important uh, uh, we were literally forced to be here and just a few of us and I know that a number of people are following us online using the Facebook page in the United Nations uh, office this morning. I wanted to make that uh, fairly clear. The second one is uh, Your Excellency the High Commission, the Commissioner, allow me to kindly take this opportunity to welcome you to Nairobi. I know for sure that uh, this is uh, your very first function uh, after starting your duty, uh, your tour of duty here uh, in Nairobi. So on behalf particularly, I want in a very special way and with a lot and that's what we, we call it, a nice place to be, nice weather. So sir, welcome to Nairobi. Now, uh, finally, we, we are celebrating the 14th anniversary of uh, that great soul of India, Mahatma Gandhi, on whose honor this day was started. That all of us is for nonviolence, and that is really, we invite you up here. Please, you start by paying some frollo tribute uh, to the photo of Mahatma humble duty to welcome uh, the Deputy High Commissioner, uh, Mr. Ashiz Sinha, to come uh, up here and uh, give some. Thank you, Kenneth. And one said about ever. Any guesses? Yes, all your in person and those who are present viewing us online through our Facebook page, India in Kenya, of 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, first formal function. I must let people know about High Commissioner Dr. Virender Kumar Paul from the most prestigious as permanent. Before arriving here, High Commissioner Paul was additional secretary in the ministry called SAC and BIMSTEC. Prior to that, Sir was Deputy Permanent Representative of Indian Delegation in Geneva, and before that, he was Deputy High Commissioner in the High Commission of India in London. He served in Washington, D.C., Indian Embassy, and in Moscow. In Russia, he has total spent about a decade of his time. He has come to this place in a difficult time. But this difficulty rival here. He has reached out to various constituencies 
the government, the community, the media, everyone. So without further ado, I think I'll request High Commissioner Sir to come and make his remarks. So. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sinha, for uh, uh, this generous introduction. Uh, thank you, Professor Ombongi, Chairman of uh, Kenya-India Friendship Association, for the warm words of welcome. Uh, and as you said, this happened a week ago in this beautiful city. And, and uh, I feel privileged that uh, the very first uh, public function that I'm participating in uh, happens to be Gandhi Jayanti, the birth anniversary of Nadia Abdullah, Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of ICT, Innovation and Jubilee, Mr. Lindsay, Kiptinus, Director of Asia, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Professor Stephen Kiyama, Vice Chancellor of uh, the University of Nairobi, Mr. Sharad so the Postmaster General and CEO of Postal Corporation of Kenya, uh, Professor Kenneth uh, Ombongi, gracious presence on this important occasion. And uh, it's an honor for us to welcome you all on this important occasion. Those who are not present here, but they are linked uh, with this event through the life Facebook streaming, uh, that I understand is, is uh, going on. We particularly recognize the role and contribution of the to virtually interact with a good number of leaders of the Indian community associations here in Kenya. And it was indeed most heartening to know about their enthusiasm to strengthen the India-Kenya together with the Indian High Commission in Nairobi. And uh, uh, I assured them that uh, as we go along uh, during my own stay here, uh, I would continue the happy tradition, I would continue the long-standing tradition of working together uh, with the Indian community here, partnership and uh, friendship. Uh, I also take this uh, opportunity to welcome and thank representatives of uh, the media and uh, there is no doubt uh, that the story of this occasion and uh, the special event that we are going to have today uh, relating to the release of uh, the commemorative stamp uh, in, in uh, the memory of Mahatma Gandhi. Also, uh, thank my own team in the High Commission, led by the Deputy High Commissioner and the Head of Chancery, and all the officials of the High Commission here uh, for their hard work over the last several weeks to put together this uh, important uh, event uh, for what uh, my own team has uh, done to make this event possible in such a professional uh, way. Uh, earlier today, uh, we gathered at the Mahatma Gandhi statue, uh, which is just outside the Mahatma Gandhi wing of uh, the University of uh, Nairobi to pay uh, respects and to pay floral tributes uh, to Mahatma Gandhi uh, on this occasion, on this university who were present there uh, at that brief uh, ceremony. Because of uh, the prevailing COVID situation, uh, it was not possible to have uh, the usual larger gallery. Uh, sincerely hope that uh, uh, in, in uh, that, that, that the present situation, the present difficult, challenging times, uh, uh, would not last too long, and uh, we should be back on the road sooner than uh, later. Also, it is also marked by the International Day of Nonviolence, and uh, I am extremely grateful. Uh, your presence here uh, means a lot to us. It means a lot uh, to uh, the event that we are holding today uh, and, and, uh, and there is no doubt that uh, this event today is of 
uh, international significance. Uh, one of the highlights uh, today is going to be the release of uh, a commemorative stamp uh, by the government of Kenya uh, through uh, Posta uh, Kenya. Uh, this particular element in today's program is something which uh, is very striking. Uh, this adds more value uh, to the occasion because uh, uh, deep appreciation, uh, this suggestion by the government of Kenya towards the enduring partnership between our two, uh, whose ideals and in Kenya, uh, I would like at the highest political level, uh, the visit uh, of uh, our prime minister in 2017. And it is widely believed uh, uh, in action, in thoughts, and what's happened on the ground that these two visits have brought our relationship to a qualitatively much higher level. And uh, we continue uh, to work together, uh, to work uh, intensively uh, to further strengthen uh, the relationship uh, that has been brought to these great. Earlier today in Delhi, uh, Honorable President of India and our Honorable Prime Minister. They pay tributes to Mahatma Gandhi at, uh, quote, there is so much to learn from his life and compassionate India. Uh, with these words, uh, I would like to uh, thank each and every one of you uh, once again. Uh, I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Those nice uh, and encouraging words and uh, one more time welcome uh, we now want to go to uh, a section where we will begin our activities of the morning uh, but before we do that I'll say the Deputy High Commissioner said that you have served in Russia in Britain and the United States but I want to let you know that in the context of the ceremony that we have today I think this is the most important posting uh, that you have had to Africa. Because, uh, you know, India gave us uh, a lawyer made in Britain uh, uh, who came to Africa. And we gave back to India a Mahatma. And that is the contribution of Africa in making Gandhiji. So this is the most important posting that you have had. So we will begin our ceremony by paying a tribute, special tribute to Gandhiji, uh, by actually listening to one of his most favorite uh, bhajans or hymns or prayer songs uh, that Gandhi liked to sing by a Kenyan, uh, a lady called Miss Atemi Oyunga. Uh, that is interesting. So I want to request our uh, sounds and visual engineers at the back, uh, please, uh, to give us an opportunity to listen to this hymn, Faishnav Jan To.
Thank you. Uh, let's give a hand of applause to Ms. Atemi one more time. Vaishnav Jan To, the most favorite uh, bhajan or prayer song by Gandhiji. We want to uh, listen to our first speaker who is going to speak to us on Gandhi Katha, uh, which simply means a tale of Gandhi. And uh, this is going to be brought to us online by a Gandhian scholar from India, uh, Ms. Shobana Radha Krishna. And welcome to the Gandhi Katha, story of Mahatma Gandhi, narrated by me during the commemoration of the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. I am honored to speak on the occasion of the UN International Day of Nonviolence today. In the Apostle of Peace and Nonviolence, we have an opportunity to remind the humanity of the efficacy of the messages of Mahatma Gandhi. I express gratitude to the High Commission of India and United Nations Office at Nairobi, Kenya for hosting the Gandhi Katha amidst these challenging times to learn from Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy of truth, nonviolence and purity of means, his spirituality, his environmental credo and his practices of health and wellness of body, mind and spirit for coping up and staying safe physically, mentally emotionally and spiritually during the global pandemic. I also take this opportunity to thank the today. Gandhiji's philosophy of nonviolence greatly influenced Kenya's fight for liberty, inspiring the leading lights of Kenya as seen in the lives and struggles of Harry Thuku, Jomo Kenyatta and Jaramigi Oginga Odinga in the struggle for freedom. Mahatma Gandhi drew inspiration not only from his experience in South Africa, but also from his reading of the history of Africa as a whole. Thus, we observe that during the entire nonviolent freedom struggle of Mahatma Gandhi in India, Africa was dominant in his mind as his early struggle for equality was initiated in Africa. Madi Ba Nelson Mandela, who was often dubbed as the Gandhi of South Africa, had strong Indian connections and striking similarities with Mahatma Gandhi. The anti-apartheid icon Madiba had said, and I quote, the Mahatma is an integral part of our history because it is here that he first experimented with truth, here that he demonstrated his characteristic firmness in pursuit of justice, here that he developed Satyagraha as a philosophy and a method of struggle. Even after seven decades have passed since Mahatma Gandhi passed on, in every part of the world, his relevance is felt as strongly as ever before. And his visions and actions are of an enduring significance for all times and places. His approach to life was holistic and cannot be divided into watertight compartments of social, religious, political, public and personal life. Mahatma Gandhi stands out as the champion not only of political democracy, but also of economic and spiritual democracy in today's world. He believed that moral degeneration is the root cause of all evils, including conflicts. This explains his lifelong crusade of attainment of moral values such as truthfulness, nonviolence, purity of means, love, respect, self control, forgiveness, fearlessness, friendliness, compassion, mercy, and so on. For Gandhiji, the principle of satyagraha or nonviolent resistance and civil disobedience was by non cooperation with evil through the moral values of love force, truth force, soul force, through sacrifice and self-suffering. For him, the consideration for the sufferings of fellow human beings was of paramount importance. His belief and actions that social change 
for establishing justice and dignity of humans is both less harmful and more sustainable when achieved by non-violent means is valid for all times. His legacy of contemporary world. Mahatma Gandhi's environmental practices used for the sake of development. Greed will be the main reason for the environmental degradation and the ecological crisis. And famously said, the earth has enough for man's needs, but not for man's greed. Further, Gandhiji had said, the earth, the air, the land and the water are not an inheritance from our forefathers, but on loan from our children. So we have to hand it over to them as it was handed over to us. Equality for women within the society was a principle Gandhiji passionately believed in. His vision of Sarva there, the welfare of all, becomes very relevant in the crisis of internally displaced people and migrants. And he may well have kept in mind the very basic unit of human organization, a village or a county. His vision of Gram Swaraj, which is a self-reliant, independent, self-governed village is built on the premises of sustainable development and growth, which is the need of the hour. His experience in South Africa for nearly 20 years made him fearless and forgiving because of the understanding of the strength of nonviolence with which he acquired the idea of not to win, but to win over the hearts of the oppressor through the legacy of nonviolent resistance and named it as Satyagraha. Mahatma Gandhi is universally recognized as the glorious symbol of peace and nonviolence. The philosophy of nonviolence was anchored in his deep faith in the reality of God, whom he described as truth. He said, truth is the perfect name for God. The two basic principles or ideas that guided Gandhiji's life were truth and nonviolence. For him, truth was God, and realizing this truth as God was the ultimate purpose of life. He expounded the proposition that truth could be realized only through nonviolence. Truth is the end, and nonviolence the means. Gandhiji gave his definition and explanation of nonviolence which transcended conventional understanding of the concept. For Mahatma Gandhi, nonviolence was a positive concept which meant love in the sense of selfless service of one's fellow beings, which included the entire creation. The essence of his argument is that one must try to practice nonviolence in thought, word and deed, and to organize all activities on its basis. And that would bring in unprecedented and revolutionary change in human life. The first defining feature of his nonviolence is the correlation between nonviolence and truth. According to Gandhiji's own admission, the jewel of nonviolence was discovered in the search for and contemplation of truth. In order to bring out the complementarity of the two, he compared truth and nonviolence to two sides of an unstamped metallic disc. Here Gandhiji's logic is very simple but compelling. For him, truth was both absolute and relative. Absolute truth, by its very nature, was beyond human comprehension. Though human beings were endowed with the ability to seek and find truth. Truth as individuals comprehended it from moment to moment was what Gandhiji meant by relative truth, as each person can have his or her own relative truth. What was the way to vindicate one's truth, he thought. It was clear to Gandhiji that it was improper and unjustifiable to impose one's truth on others, because what appeared to be true now might be revealed as untrue at a later point of time. Hence, imposing or compelling one's truth on others was unjustifiable and ethically wrong. So, he argued that one must be willing to take all the consequences of bearing witness to one's truth upon oneself. That is the way of nonviolence. 
Thus to him, non-violence was the only justifiable way to truth, not only to progress towards truth, but also to vindicate truth. That was the reason why he gave the dictum, truth is the end and non-violence the means thereto. The second defining feature of Gandhiji's non-violence is related to the very nature of the word non-violence. Gandhiji explained what really meant by non-violence. He said, and I quote, non-violence is not the crude thing it has been made to appear. Not to hurt any living thing is no doubt a part of non-violence, but it is its least expression. The principle of non-violence is hurt by every evil thought, undue haste, by lying, by hatred, by wishing ill to anybody. It is also violated by our holding on to what the world needs. Mahatma Gandhi's faith was firmly rooted in his belief that the entire humanity is a sublime expression of God. And it was ordained by his faith that those who aspire to worship God as devotees must dedicate themselves to active service of humanity. He said truth is God in consonance with his belief and conviction and he accepted truth and non-violence as one and the same thing as one includes the other. He said as such truth can only be realized through non-violence. In fact, non-violence is the basis for the search for truth. Therefore, the search will be futile if it is not founded in non-violence as the basis. I will play the Gandhi Katha hymn in Hindi that elaborates on Mahatma Gandhi's definition of truth as harmony between thoughts, words and deed. <laughs> Perhaps the greatest source of strength for Mahatma Gandhi was in his faith in God. Truth was the deepest and the most complete form of God. The faith gave him the constant awareness that he was to be nothing but an instrument in his hands. He was to go wherever he was led. For him, the guidance of God constituted two things. One, he had to walk on the path enlightened by truth that was available to him in whatever measures and form. Two, he had to constantly gaze inwards and find inspiration through self-introspection, self-examination and self-purification. Romia Rola, the famous French writer and pacifist, won the Nobel Prize for Literature and he wrote the biography of Mahatma Gandhi in 1924. When he met Gandhiji in 1931, and they discussed the crisis of civilization over five days in Switzerland in Velunuve. He wrote, and I quote, This little man is so fragile in appearance. His tireless and fatigue is a word that does not exist in his vocabulary. He could calmly answer for hours without a muscle of face twitching. His mind proceeds through successive experiments into action. And he follows a straight line but he never stops. 
During Gandhiji's stay at Vellunuve in Switzerland, he met Pierre Serisole, the great pacifist leader. Gandhiji had heard about Serisole's movement, but desired to hear from the man himself. Pierre told him that during the war, a village schoolmaster had refused to serve his three months as a conscript in the name of Christ. For this, he was first put in a lunatic asylum and then in the prison. Pierre was deeply impressed by this act and followed the same path. Many others followed Serisole's example and each year many men refused the conscription service. Serisole told Gandhiji that all wanted to serve as citizens but not as army men. Gandhiji told him about his experiments in South Africa and India. Serisole said, I am afraid our people in Europe are not like yours in India and are not ready for such acts as these. There was a pause. And then in a low and infinitely gentle voice, as though sorry for the terrific rebuke that he was implying, Gandhiji said, Are you sure it is the people who are not ready, Mr. Sarisole? Oh, exclaimed Pierre, and we were all silent, accepting the challenge, wrote Muriel Lester, who was witness to this conversation. I see what you mean. You are right. It is we who are failing. It is leadership that we lack. Is that what you mean? In the same small voice, Gandhiji answered, I must confess, Mr. Sirisole, I do not seem to have come across leaders in Europe, not of the sort that the times call for. Tell us what qualities you think a leader for this age would need, Pierre argued. Realization of God every minute of 24 hours, announced Gandhiji. And if a man asked, what do you mean by God? asked Pierre. Gandhiji replied, I would answer, truth is God and the way to find him is non-violence. From very early in life, Gandhiji understood the universe to be an organic whole. Gandhiji's philosophy exists on several planes the spiritual or religious, moral, educational, political, economic, social, individual, and collective. Gandhiji had said, if we have no charity and no tolerance, we shall never settle our differences amicably and must therefore always submit to the arbitration of a third party. Many of today's conflict management techniques and resolution processes have a clear shadow of what and how Gandhiji had seen the international issues in his time. Gandhiji was the conscience keeper of humanity that his ideas will be an inspiration for us both as individuals and as a society is beyond any doubt. He was an epoch maker, one who could sow the seeds for the next generation from the fruits of the previous one. Mahatma Gandhi is the most powerful visionary and a practical idealist from the first half of the last century whose life is a role model for us all. But the effort has to begin from a point where you are standing. That is what made all Mahatma Gandhi's idealist actions practical and he can be truly called a man of action. But it does not only mean he was very busy. What we mean is the action of putting ideas or beliefs into practice more than anything else was the driving force in his life. The answer for Mahatma Gandhi was always found in action. He had said, an ounce of practice is worth more than tons of preaching. He has made significant and seminal contributions that span across several disciplines. In my opinion, Mahatma Gandhi's life left the most powerful and strong imprint on the humanity of the world. He had said, my life is my message. William James Durant, the American writer, historian and philosopher, best known for writing the story of civilization, spoke some of the most inspirational words ever about the Mahatma. He said, and I quote, not since Buddha has India so revered any man, not since simplicity of soul and forgiveness of enemies.
we have the astonishing phenomenon of a revolution led by a saint. Now I will play the Gandhi Katha hymn, which explains Gandhi's philosophy of truth is God. <laughs> Gandhian philosophy is to transform the individual and society in accordance with the principles of truth and non-violence. The historic task before humankind is to progress towards non-violent struggle. Two of the important factors that brought Gandhiji closer to people are the genuine inspiration he was able to offer to the self-respecting and freedom-loving citizens. Through his selfless service, he demonstrated his spirit of service, which was not driven by any personal or ulterior desire. His experiments won him respects from even those who opposed him and those who never met him or knew him. Gandhiji did all these with remarkable success, which in turn resulted in millions, two in South Africa and two in India. Ashrams had a mingling of political and spiritual aims. It was a practical laboratory for transforming ordinary men and women into extraordinary seekers and satyagrahis for offering the highest sacrifice of their lives to establish their self-respect and dignity. I am happy to inform you that I was born in his last ashram in Sevagram for quite some time. Gandhi had wonderful courtesy and punctuality, other man. So he had learned how to pack the most into every minute. Yet he never gave the impression of being hurried and impatient elements and his spirituality was tempered by his vision of a non-violent society and his constructive program was integral to his policy and stayed there for a week. Every day he used to sit in how the dignity of the common man can be brought up. It is also a symbol of happiness. Though Gandhiji's role and contributions to the political arena are well known, what is less known is his contributions towards health and wellness. He was a firm belief lifestyle and positive thinking. His interest in health, hygiene, nutrition and diseases was as great as his interest in politics. He insisted that adopting preventive measures for diseases was better than treatment. He was essentially a man of science. He was very important. To him, the study of this question, his message was simple and easy to follow. It encouraged everyone to respect simplicity, voluntary self-control, reduce the wants, follow the tradition, cultural practices, the values, the environmental credo, and treat oneself through nature cure for living in harmony with nature. For Gandhiji, the outside universe was but a reflection of the inside universe. He repeated time and again that the universe is compressed in the atom. There is not one law for the atom and another for the universe. It was based on his actual spiritual experience that gave him the conviction that the moral principles have no meaning unless they can be made to serve as the guide of conduct in the daily affairs of man. The Sanskrit proverb, Yatha Pinde Tatha Brahmande says, you are the universe within the universe. As with the self, so is the universe. What is going on within you is same as what is going on in the universe. From the mind-body perspective, Gandhiji's standpoint was that health is an optimal integration of body, mind, spirit, soul and environment. Environment is our extended body. Gandhiji used to remain positive under all circumstances and that was his main. Everyone is affected. It is important to face it humbly with reverence to the virus, gratitude and surrender to the divine forces which are beyond our control. 
fearlessly, intelligently, and with a positive action. For Gandhiji, this was his way of life. Therefore, Mahatma Gandhi comes across as the greatest healer and the wellness guru. The Gandhian principles of free lifestyle, positive outlook, empowerment for self-care and care in the community would make perfect sense. I once again take this opportunity to thank the Indian mission for hosting Gandhi Katha. With Gandhiji's blessings who had said that peace is the only positive force which will lead us from darkness to light, I will end with the Sanskrit verse Yaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashchit Dukkha Bhagavet Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi by grief. Om Peace Peace Peace. What do you say to that? I can only say Om. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, you can assist me by giving a hand of applause to Madam Radha Krishnan for that good. Uh, uh, is that uh, the idea roots in Africa? Uh, that makes me feel happy, Your Excellency. Number two, many of the people around Gandhi and his friends wondered uh, most of the time, including his very close friend, uh, the Christian missionary C.F. Andrews, why Gandhi could not raise an army and uh, stage a rebellion against the British uh, in India. Gandhi responded to this by saying, and I quote, we do not use nonviolence because we are cowards. If every Indian of the more than 600 million Indians took us to it, darkness can only be removed by light, and truth can be removed by truth, and the truth is God. That was Gandhi for you. Now, I, before we go to the next stage of uh, this program, I want to recognize and appreciate the Vice Chancellor of the University of Nairobi, Professor Stephen uh, Kiama, uh, who has uh, joined us as the lecture was going on. Professor, you're very welcome. I mentioned earlier on that um, in no more times, this function used to be held in the University of Nairobi, uh, where it attracts a much larger audience. Uh, today we are here because of the abnormal uh, situation that we find ourselves. But in a way, uh, this has become the extension of the University of Nairobi, Your Excellency, because uh, uh, for those who don't know, I'm an employee of the University of Nairobi, and uh, our VC is my boss. Uh, although here I wear a different cap of being the chairman of the Kenya-India Friendship Association. So at the center of things, is actually the university. And with us here, we have uh, a few student frontiers from the university who normally helps me uh, to do the work of Kifa, represented by Peter Nyachai, who is there, yes, Peter, uh, uh, to do the, the work that we do. So in a way, uh, this function is an extension of the university. So, Prof, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, at this stage, uh, and with a lot of humility, I want to welcome uh, Madam Zainabu Hawa Bungura, the Director General of the United Nations Office here in Nairobi, uh, to make her remarks and then help us to uh, actually listen to the speech of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio uh, Guterres, which is coming to us through video. So, Madam, please, I welcome you.
Your Excellency, Dr. Viranda Kumar Paul, ICOM Administrative Secretary, Minister of ICT, Innovation and Youth. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased each year, as proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in 2007, we mark this day on the anniversary of the birth of Mahatma Gandhi in tribute to his legacy of peace, tolerance, and understanding, which you just watch. The values exposed by Mahatma Gandhi are very much needed in today's world. Intolerance, injustice, and hatred are all too evident, as inequality and societal divisions are on the rise and global poverty is escalating. It is in such turbulent and trying times that we should turn to the ideals of Mahatma Gandhi for renewed hope, for guardians, and for strengthening our resolve to build peaceful and harmonious world. The principles of tolerance and human dignity that Gandhi championed are at the heart of the United Nations on purpose. His philosophy of service to humanity encourages us to pursue our efforts to create a, world, a better world, even in the face of what seem like insurmountable challenges or painfully slow progress. It is natural that we in the United Nations family have long drawn inspiration from Mahatma Gandhi and we continue to do so during this 75th anniversary year of the United Nations. I now invite you to view the message of the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Gotaros, on the occasion of the International Day of Nonviolence. Thank you for your kind attention. in marking the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi, this international day highlights the remarkable power of nonviolence and peaceful protest. It is also a timely reminder to strive to uphold values that Gandhi lived by, the promotion of dignity, equal protection for all, and communities living together in peace. On this year's observance, we have a special duty, stop the fighting to focus on our common enemy, COVID-19. There is only one winner of conflict during a pandemic, the virus itself. As the pandemic took hold, I called for a global ceasefire. Today, we need a new push by the international community to make this a reality by the end of this year. Ceasefires would ease immense suffering, help to lower the risk of famine, and create space for negotiations towards peace. Deep mistrust stands in the way. Yet I see reasons for hope. In some places, we see a standstill in the violence. A great many member states, religious leaders, civil society networks, and others back my call. Now is the time to intensify our efforts. Let us be inspired by the spirit of Gandhi and the enduring principles of the UN Charter. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary General. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, you. Uh, we move to the next stage of the program where we are uh, going to uh, release the commemorative uh, postage stamp uh, in honor of Gandhi uh, by uh, Posta Kenya. And I want to invite, in a very special way, Your Excellency, the High Commissioner, to come up front. Uh, Madam Your Excellency, the Director General, uh, Madam Nadia and uh, Professor uh, Kiyama, uh, the Kenya India Friendship Association uh, and the team, uh, because you sit in our executive committee. And I will invite uh, uh, those friends who are helping us to do this, please, to...
I'll welcome Madam Milka Mua from uh, Posta Kenya, who is representing uh, the Postmaster General, to make some remarks for a few minutes, and then uh, she can direct us on what to do in the ceremony. His High, Commission, High Commissioner of India, Your Excellency Dr. Paul, Deputy High Commissioner, Mr. Sinha, Honorable Ababu Namomba, Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Madam Zainabu Hawa, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today, I'm here to represent our CEO, Mr. Dan Kagwe, who could not be with us due to other official duties, and I have a very small speech and a request that I read on his behalf. Thank you. On behalf of Postal Corporation of Kenya, I'm delighted to be part of this auspicious occasion, marking the 14th International Day of Nonviolence and the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. We will today launch a commemorative stamp in honor of this inspirational figure that played a critical role in championing for Indian independence from the British colonial rule. We note and appreciate that Mahatma Gandhi, who was a lawyer educated in the United Kingdom, started practicing law in South Africa and struggled to fight apartheid system in its initial form. I wish to extend my deepest gratitude to our host this afternoon, the Indian High Commission to Kenya, His Excellency Dr. Paul, for partnering with Poster Kenya to launch this new set of commemorative stamps. We are grateful for the opportunity to be part of celebrating the great global icon. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, postal services in Kenya have been in existence for over 125 years since the days of Imperial British East Africa. The cooperation mandate includes provision of accessible, affordable, and reliable postal services to all parts of Kenya and as a public postal licensee. Postal Kenya was established through an Act of Parliament in 1998 and operates as a commercial enterprise. We have about 623 postal outlets all over Kenya. So with those few remarks, I'd like also to inform you, ladies and gentlemen, that the postage stamp that we are launching here today carries particular significance to us in the Postal Corporation of Kenya. This is because it is the tool that justifies a prepayment for mail postage. It is a means of expressing our culture, history, and ambassador for our country's heritage and an educational tool for our beloved Kenyans and global citizens. In our postal operations, we classify stamps in two categories. We have definitive and commemorative stamps. Definitive stamps are issued essentially for postage services, while commemorative stamps are issued to mark special events like what we have today. This anniversary stamp that we are launching today to commemorate Mahatma Gandhi institutions to produce stamps depicting their various developments. And one case in point is the Big Four Agenda. Day marks the birth of a remarkable man, leader of the Indian independence movement, and pioneer of the philosophy and strategy of nonviolence. His life and achievements have inspired many generations, and even in death, his legacy still lives on. With this in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi stamp we are unveiling here today aims to inform educate and raise awareness on matters non-violence, hence promoting a culture of peace, understanding, and tolerance. Postal Corporation of Kenya is grateful and proud to contribute towards this important day and will continue supporting our stakeholders, both in private and public sector. Finally, the commemorative stamps are now available at our post offices countrywide for use in postage and collection by lovers of philatelic materials. You are all invited to visit our sales desks at any post office countrywide. To Magadhi's quote, nonviolence is the greatest force at the disposal of mankind. With these few remarks, it is now my great pleasure to officially launch 
the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Happy International Day on Nonviolence and happy birthday to a great soul. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much, uh, our dignitaries, for accepting uh, to do that uh, uh, small ceremony uh, of a great event. Thank you so much. You can take your seats now. I now want to invite again in a very special way, uh, Madam Nadia Hamed Abdallah, the Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of ICT, Innovation and Youth Affairs. Madam, you are very welcome to speak on behalf of uh, the ministry. Uh, as you come, we, we are very aware of the good work that you are doing in the ministry, particularly in empowering the youth, and we appreciate that. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'll just formally introduce myself again. My name is uh, Nadia. My name is Nadia Ahmed Abdallah. I'm the youngest Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of ICT, Innovation and Youth Affairs, and in Kenya as a whole. It is with immense pleasure this afternoon that I join His Excellency Dr. Virnard Paul the Indian High Commission of Kenya and other distinguished guests to officially launch 
the commemorative stamp issue of the 151 birth of the anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. <coughs> Sorry. We have launched today as a collaboration between the University of Nairobi, Postal Corporation of Kenya, and the Indian High Commission of Kenya. I take this opportunity to congratulate our host this afternoon, the Indian High Commission, for agreeing to partner with Postal Corporation of Kenya for honoring the great world icon Mahatma Gandhi, who is the leader of the Indian independence movement and pioneer of the philosophy of nonviolence. Ladies and gentlemen, the post office remains the most accessible, effective, and time-tested communication platform in Kenya. With a vast network and varied product portfolio that greatly benefits the general public countrywide, this is a clear demonstration of the pivotal role Post Kenya plays in extending socio-economic benefits to the public. I am proud to state that the Post Kenya has over the years continued to communicate important national historical facts about our country, Kenya, through its commemorative postages stamps over the years. I take this opportunity to request the Government of India through the Indian High Commissioner in Nairobi, His Excellency Dr. Vrindad Paul, to explore ways how India Postal Administration and Postal Corporation of Kenya, of Kenya can collaborate and partner in mutual areas. I note and appreciate the Indian government that has in the past extended grants and scholarships for Postal Corporation of Kenya employees since 1963. The Noble Program should have reactivated for the benefit of all the stakeholders going forward. Finally, I would like to take to once again commend all the stakeholders involved for this timely and notably commemorative stamp I congratulate the key stakeholders for partnering and issuing the stamp marking the birth of Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you and God bless you all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to listen to a video message uh, from uh, the Chief Administra uh, Administrative Secretary of our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Abab Namwamba, uh, please. Honorable Namwamba was uh, meant to be with us, uh, but due to uh, some uh, compelling circumstances, he was not able. So please. October the 2nd, we celebrate the 14th International Day of Nonviolence, a day that is consecrated by a United Nations resolution to mark the world's commitment to living a life without violence. This day will also coincide with the 151st birthday anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Today I want to join the people, the government of India, in celebrating this day and in cherishing the iconic figure that Mahatma Gandhi was, is, and continues to be, towering like a colossus through the sands of time. We cherish the contribution of Mahatma Gandhi to our philosophy, to our thinking, to our ideals, and his contribution to making the world better place for all of us through generations. Mahatma Gandhi has influenced those of us that have followed the path of many of the spheres he touched in his life. As an attorney myself, as a political leader, and as a diplomat, I have been immensely influenced by the thinking, the philosophy, the posture of Mahatma Gandhi. His thinking, his philosophy, his words on great subjects like nonviolence has influenced the world in a big way. His teachings on truth continues to be one of the indelible marks in my life. And on this day, I feel obliged to really share, and especially when standing firm on what you believe in. 
Mahatma Gandhi says, correct, for just being you, never speak your mind. Speak your mind always. Amazing inspiration on standing for the truth, on standing for what you believe in. And on this occasion, may we be truthful, may we be non coronavirus pandemic, when global solidarity and ma our multilateral action is more needed than 151st birthday. Indeed. Now I speak to us, uh, Kiyama uh, and Eda. Thank you. Your Excellency, I'm happy to join with you uh, this early afternoon on the occasion of the 151st birthday of the Mahatma. As was said at the very beginning of the Mahatma, it was said by as this ever in flesh and blood walked the surface of this earth. In the celebrate a little man with the lawn cloth who brought down an empire which once claimed that the sun could not set, but he used the potent power of the truth to move the world. It is that man whom Rabin Ranath Tagore christened the Mahatma that we celebrate. Mahatma, his ideas had been cross-fertilized, element in Gandhi. It therefore can be said that Gandhi, but I cannot, is become silent in Africa, which makes Gandhi relevant. The month of September, which concluded only two days ago, was the month of surrendering all illegal guns and the, gun, the amnesty was declared. That has not happened. As I speak to you today, there is conflict in many parts of Africa. If there is no conflict in Mozambique, there is conflict in the Cameroons, in Libya, in Senegal, and giving meaning to it. Bless you. Yes, good afternoon everyone, the Indian High Commission and the all distinguished guests who are gathered here. Uh, this morning, the High Commissioner led a team uh, from the High Commission and we joined as a university community led by the Chancellor, Fijula Tanzi, and we gathered at the statue of Gadi, which is uh, placed at the University of Nairobi, next to what we call the Gadi Wing. Uh, so as a university community, we are what we are uh, because of the input and the values and the ethos that were brought about uh, by this uh, great man. We celebrate them. I am happy that even today also we are releasing a new stamp. And I remember when we were growing up as young people in the village, I think we started doing the letters later when you would go to the post office and buy a stamp to send a letter. But sometimes you send them through the matatos to reach someone in a lobby or other places. And I would imagine that the stamp, to a large extent, also represents those messages that you'd like to send to a loved one, or you'd like to communicate. And I, I, to a large extent, it is very difficult to communicate a violence in a letter. Yeah. So this putting a, sending a letter in a stamp was, is really messages of love and hope and non-violence. So I think this coming together in this day, launching this stamp, I think really it is reflecting some of those values that we need to have. We think, when we think about our own country, we see on TVs violence, uh, whether it's in the political arena, whether it is in churches, 
We did violence in families. And I think this gathering of all of us gathered here is just to try to reflect as a reminder to all of us as we think of Gadi and what he taught that all of us should desist in the attempt for violence and that we remember this day also in passing messages of hope and encouragement to others and working with others rather than and, and explaining to them what we mean on something rather than beating them. And you know the university, and there has been a lot of the business of searching for truth. There's nothing else that's done there. As you're seeking for that knowledge on this, all of us, as uh, people, even as symbolized by God. Sometimes back, I met a bishop and I was asking, how is it when you work in the, in the northern Kenya and those other places where people do cattle wrestling? They go, steal, they, it's, they don't carry it stealing. But you go and pick cows from the neighborhood and take them and make them your own. And perhaps when you get home, then your wives, if you have many, or your wife, and the others are celebrating. And perhaps in the process you also hurt other people. I think we need to reflect even on this day that some of those practices must come to an end so that we always and only start for non-violence practices. May we remember this day and Gathi and the United Nations Day. God bless you. I can unmask what I'm going to be saying. Uh, a lot has been said about the Mahatma, so I don't need to add, and I wish to say it here, that the Mahatma had a great sense of humor, a very pluckish kind of sense of humor. For instance, when he went, someone said, when will you visit America? And he replied, yes, I have heard about that. They have kept the zoo and the cage ready so that everyone can see this strange creature. Right? Because there is no fourth class. That was Gandhi, South Africa. He went to his wife and he said to her, this means you was asked, are you going to, give, going to give, go dressed as you are? Was also reflected when he was a student at the University of London. This is when the son Gandhi, who was very funny looking in those days, wore jackets, three-piece suit, pinstripe trousers, and a bowler hat. And when Sarojini Naidu first saw him, she laughed at this very funny image. But let me tell you of three instances in the college, in the university. When Gandhi sat for lunch, and he sat next to this Professor Peter, Professor Peter turned around to him and said, Mr. Gandhi, a pig and a bird don't sit together. So Gandhi said, Professor, don't worry. I will soon fly away. <laughs> he, he got up and he went and took a seat somewhere else. So very angry, one contained wisdom. I thought so. If I were in your place, I would pick the one with wisdom. So Gandhi said, you take what you don't have. <laughs> but the professor put in broad capital letters, idiot, and gave it back to him. So Gandhi looked and he said, Professor, you have signed your name, but you haven't checked my paper. <laughs> so, this, so that was Gandhi. So let me not say very much about him. But it may be just to end with what Pandit Nehru had said when Mahatma Gandhi passed away. Nehru had said, the light has gone out of our lives. 
and there is darkness everywhere. I do not quite know what to tell or how to say it, because our beloved leader, the Papu, as we call him, is no more. But he went on to say that I said that the light has gone out, and yet I was wrong, for the light that shone in this country was no ordinary light. And that is what is being written. Thank you very much, uh, Sharad. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Pielo, and thank you, Professor Kiama, for those uh, very nice thoughts. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I now, in a very special way, want to invite uh, the Deputy High Commissioner, uh, Mr. Siniha, uh, to come in front and uh, give a vote of thanks, and then preside over uh, felicitations of visitors and our distinguished speakers. Uh, which is also going to be led by the High Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Senior, please. Thank you, sir. Way. We are just 15 minutes over short our time, which is a record for such an event. Thank you very much, each one of you present here physically and joining us online. No words can thank, uh, you know, can do the justice of expressing our gratitude towards each one of you for taking out your time. Uh, we, uh, this is a, an ongoing, ongoing cooperation, it's a continuum. Very soon we'll see the 2nd October 2021 and we'll all be celebrating it uh, all these ideas would still be relevant, ever more relevant. It never gets old. So I think to quickly uh, move towards the conclusion of the program, uh, and I must say before, the program doesn't conclude without you taking lunch with us. It's a simple sattvic, which means what Gandhiji loved to eat, that kind of a food uh, we put together for lunch, but before the trees here. And may I request one by one, all of you to come on the stage starting with Madam DG Yunan. May I request you to come on the stage, please. And stay back for a group picture after the felicitation. Madam CAS. <laughs> Vice Chancellor Pratt. <laughs> Sharad Rauji. <laughs> Madam from Post Akinia, please come up stage. And Kenneth, this time, we need to felicitate you. Come up stage. Thank you very much, High Commissioner Sir. Thank you very much, Madam DG, Madam CS, Kenneth, Professor, Sharad Rao, Pelo. Thank you very much. Please join us for lunch outside. In a COVID safe way, we will have our lunch. Some people can come back to this room.